So in this video, we're gonna take a look at the idea of insecure deserialization through web applications. Specifically, we're gonna take a look at modifying serialized objects that are being passed through the packets um, from the client side to the server side and not actually being verified on the server side. So the general idea of this sort of exploit is that uh, when we are using a web application, the web application may want to pass data between us and the server. And when it does that, it has a few different ways to be able to do that. And one way is using what are called serialized objects. And the general idea of this is that a serialized object is sort of like an encoded form of an object that is used by the application. And in general, we send data from our, from our clients in that format and then the server can just decode it and use that data directly. Now, when this is done right, it's a very convenient way to send data, but when it's done wrong and not verified properly, the client can insert some malicious data inside of that input to be able to potentially cause problems on the server. So we're gonna take a look at how we can do that sort of thing using Burp Suite, and generally how we can identify these types of vulnerabilities. So on this page, we have a login, and the login is really the main point of interest for us. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn my intercept on under my proxy tab. And when I do this, I'm gonna go ahead and log in. The username is Wiener and the password is Peter. That's just an account that they've given us for this login page. And you'll see that this is the post request that goes to the login. We're not particularly interested in that right now. But what we are interested in is this request here. You can see in this request, we have a cookie that has a session in it. I'm gonna go ahead and send that to the repeater. I'm gonna turn off my intercept and we're gonna go ahead and work with this request because that cookie is essentially keeping track of our actual session inside of the web application. So you can see that the session equals this long string of data. So odds are this session is um, related to either a session ID or it's related to some information about my session that's being sent in some serialized way. And one thing that makes me very interested in this is this percent %3D at the end. When we have URL encoding, what happens is it turns special HTML characters or HTTP characters into encoded versions of themselves so that they don't cause any problems with requests. Percent %3D translates to an equal sign. I know that any string that ends with an equal sign could potentially be base64 encoded. When something's encoded like that, it sort of sets off an alarm bell that says, hey, maybe this might be a serialized object. We may want to take a look at this data a little bit further. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and put it into our decoder and try decoding it from base64. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to right click and send this to the decoder. And let's just try decoding this as base64 and just see what happens. You'll see we get something that generally resembles what I would expect an object to look like, but you can see there's a bit of garbled text at the end here. This garbled text is here because of the URL encoding, so you know like the percent %3D and all of that. If we want to solve this, we're going to first decode as a URL. This turns that back into an equal sign, so you see it gets rid of that actual encoding. And now when we decode as base64, we get the actual object itself. So it's important to note that sometimes you need to decode in two steps rather than just one. If you are encoded in the URL format, you can decode that through the decoder as well. Now in general, you can see that this object is storing a lot of different information about our user session. Um, just in general, if you're trying to read these, typically they'll give you like the property, they'll give you the format, and then I believe that they typically will give you the length as well. So you can see that this is like username, it has, it's a string format and it has, um, I believe a length of six, which is this value here. And then um, similarly, like um, we have like string five and admin. And then um, with the admin here, we have a B, which means Boolean. So it's a Boolean value, which is zero, which means that it's not true. Now in general, if we're looking at this, we can see that admin is set to false maybe we can just try setting admin to true, which would be one. And maybe that will give us access to the admin page. So that's generally what our thought process is as we're going through this. Now, if I want to utilize this new session ID with my actual session, what I need to do is I need to re-encode it. So to re-encode it, we're gonna do the opposite of what we did. So we decoded as a URL and then decoded base64. So that means I'm gonna encode as base64 and then I'm gonna encode as URL. 
and this in turn gives us the new session ID related to the modifications that I just made. So now I'm going to go ahead and copy this. I'm going to go back to our repeater. Now, let me send this request just to show you generally what this session ends up looking like. This is what it looks like before we modify anything. Now, after we modify this um, token or cookie, right, this cookie session, um, what's going to happen is when I send this request, you'll see that the admin panel is now unlocked. So as you can see, we now have a session that is authenticated as an administrator. And this is the general idea of doing um, or taking advantage of serialized objects, right? We can change the data client side. And since the server side doesn't verify, we're able to easily gain access to the administrative portion of the website without actually being an administrator. So this is a common type of vulnerability that exists that is very easy to exploit with Burp due to the fact that we can easily, you know, take that piece of information and decode it and then re-encode it. It makes it very easy to actually exploit this through Burp Suite.